What's up YouTube, Saf here on Super Saf TV, and in this video I'm going to be comparing the specs and features of the Samsung Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge to the iPhone 6. So we've had the Samsung Galaxy S and the S6 Edge announced today. We're going to be combining both of these in this comparison, mainly to keep things a little bit easier because they have some differences but a lot of similarities. So how did the flagships of Samsung this year compare to Apple's flagship here? Well, do hit that thumbs up button and let's find out. So starting off with the size difference, the S6 is slightly larger compared to the iPhone 6, 5.3 millimeters in terms of the height, 3.5 millimeters in terms of the width, but it is 0.1 millimeters thinner. So it looks like Samsung have deliberately made it just a tad thinner compared to the iPhone 6. Now the S6 Edge is roughly about four millimeters larger in terms of the height and around about 3.1 millimeters in terms of the width. And it's also 0.1 millimeters thicker compared to the iPhone 6. So both the S6 and the S6 Edge are slightly larger compared to the iPhone 6 but that does come down to the screen size the iPhone 6 has a 4.7 inch size screen whereas the S6 and the S6 Edge both have a 5.1 inch display so at that larger screen size you're gonna have to compromise with slightly larger size devices now the key thing here is that the S6 Edge has dual curves on both sides so this makes it quite unique in terms of the design as well as some of the features which we'll be talking about a little bit later and moving on to the resolution of these screens so the iPhone 6 has a 1334 by 750 pixel resolution resolution and that works out to roughly about 326 ppi now with the s6 and the s6 edge they've gone for a quad hd display so you've got a massive 2560 by 1440 p resolution and that works out to roughly about 577 ppi pixel density so a much higher pixel density on the s6 and s6 edge compared to the iphone 6. now a lot of people will argue that ppi at this level is not really noticeable uh, yes at a distance it's probably not noticeable but when you do bring the devices closer this is something that you're definitely going to be a notice and it's going to result in more sharp or more crisp images and text. So this will come down to your personal preference. To some people that might not be much of a big deal but it is quite impressive that you've got this high PPI on a smartphones here on the S6 and the S6 Edge. Now in terms of the weight there's not much difference. The S6 Edge is just 3 grams more compared to the iPhone 6 and the S6 is roughly about 9 grams more compared to the iPhone 6. So you're not going to notice much of a difference and it's quite impressive that even though you've got uh, quite large devices here they do weigh roughly the same. Now in terms of the build the iPhone 6 has a premium metal build so it's a full metal unibody and it's been praised quite a lot for its build quality. I'm personally not a huge fan of those antennas bands but other than that it's a very solidly built device now this is something that Samsung have been criticized about over and over again the build that they've gone for plastic builds traditionally but they've improved that here on the S6 and the S6 Edge you've got a metal frame and then you've got Gorilla Glass panels on the front and the back so this is supposed to make it quite solid it's quite similar to what we see on the Xperia devices with those glass panels and the metal frame so both of these do have a premium build Samsung have also gone ahead to say that the metal frame is actually 50% stronger than the competition and the lady that was presenting at the announcement also joked about the fact that you were not going to be able to bend the S6 and the S6 Edge. Now that we'll have to see when it comes to hands on time. I'm personally not going to be bending it but if somebody does try to do that. Overall it is going to come down to your personal preference which one you think looks and feels better. Now moving on to the internals of these devices what's powering them? Well the iPhone 6 has the Apple A8 chip so that's a, the 64-bit chip and it's got a dual core 1.4 gigahertz clock speed. Now with the S6 and S6 Edge you've got Samsung's Exynos chip and that's an octa-core chip and it's also 64 bits. We are going to have to put these side by side to see the performance differences because other things like software do come in to play but no doubt the S6 and the S6 Edge are going to be super powerful. The iPhone 6 has been very very powerful as well in my experience of using it. Moving on to the RAM, the iPhone 6 just has one gigabyte of RAM whereas the S6 and the S6 Edge come with three gigabytes of RAM. So you've got triple the amount of RAM here on the Samsung devices. So this is going to definitely help towards multitasking and some of the multitasking features that Samsung offers as well, such as multi-window, really will take advantage of that extra RAM. Now, in terms of the storage options available, the iPhone 6 comes in 16, 
64 and 128 gig versions. Now I was quite annoyed at the fact that they still stuck to a, a base model of 16. They should have just gone straight to 32, I believe. Um, Samsung have actually done this. So you've got the 32, 64 and 128 gig of version. So you've got a, a few different options here. The base model does come in higher in terms of storage compared to the iPhone 6. Now Samsung have also said that you've got flash storage on here, super fast flash storage, something that we've not seen in smartphones before. So it should have some very uh, fast and more efficient reading and writing speeds. Now one disappointment that will come to lots of Samsung users is the fact that you don't have expandable storage anymore. So this is something that you don't have in the S6 or the S6 Edge. This is something we've never seen on the iPhone models. So you're not going to be able to get a memory card and expand that storage. If you do want more storage, you're going to have to go for a larger version. I know this is going to disappoint a lot of Samsung users out there. Now moving on to the cameras, the iPhone 6 has an 8 megapixel rear facing camera and it's a really good camera, very consistent and it produces some good quality results. You've also got phase detection, autofocus, they call it focus pixels and you've also got a true dual LED flash which also works very very well. Now with the S6 and the S6 Edge, they've got a 16 megapixel rear facing camera. It has optical image stabilization as well so here's an advantage that you've got here. Optical image stabilization is a great on smartphones. The iPhone 6 does not have this. The 6 Plus did have this but they did not put this in the iPhone 6. Now Samsung have also tried to speed up the time it takes you to take pictures so they've got super fast autofocus and you can also activate the camera within seconds or I think it's one within one second 0.7 seconds I think it is by tapping the home button twice so that's going to immediately pull up the camera and it's going to allow you to take a picture. Now they have compared this to the iPhone 6 Plus themselves and the low light images also look a lot better now we, we are going to have to test these out hands on and put them side by side like we do in the channel so make sure you are subscribed to see those comparisons first. In terms of video the iPhone 6 can film 1080p up to 60 frames a second. You've also got that super slow motion so that's 720p at 240 frames a second. Really really nice slow motion. Personally that's the best one of the best features for me on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. Now with the S6 and the S6 Edge you have 4k video so that's 2160p at 30 frames a second and I believe you've also got 720p at 120 frames a second. They've not specified exactly the slow motion rate on here but the slow motion king usually has a being the iPhone. Now moving on to the front facing cameras the iPhone 6 has a 1.2 megapixel front facing camera capable of filming 720p HD. Now this is a really really nice and consistent front facing camera although the resolution is quite small. With the S5 I was really disappointed with the front facing camera it was not very sharp and it just did not perform as well as the competition. Now with the S6 and the S6 Edge they have said to improve this so you've got a 5 megapixel front facing camera and it's got the aperture of f1.9 so it's again supposed to be better in low light we are going to have to put these side by side to compare now in terms of the video recording you should have 1440p this is something that you've got on the note 4 so that's got 3.7 megapixel front facing camera and it can film at that resolution so i uh, although they haven't fully confirmed this i would expect it to be 1440p in terms of recording from the front facing camera you are going to have 1080p as standard as well they have also included some additional features so you've got real time hdr from the front facing camera so this is the first and you've also got a special low light mode which is going to take multiple pictures and combine them to give you a better low light image from the front facing camera these again we are going to have to try out hands on and moving on to the software the iPhone comes with Apple's iOS so that's the latest version I believe it's on 8.1.3 right now the S6 and the S6 Edge are going to come with Android and they're going to come with the latest version which is Lollipop now you are going to have the TouchWiz UI on top so this is something that a lot of people don't like and they say it has a lot of lag but Samsung have said that they have tried to eliminate lag altogether so you've got zero lag on these devices we'll have to wait and see if that actually is the case and they've said that they have removed lots of the touch with features so some of the features um, they have removed 40% uh, of the features they've said I don't know how they've calculated that but 40% of the features they have removed now in terms of which operating system is better that is going to come down to your personal preference I'm not going to go into a battle here now moving on to some of the additional features that that you've got on both devices that the iPhone 6 comes with touch ID so you've got that fingerprint scanner on the home button personally for me up until this point it has worked the best from any other smartphone it's really fast and snappy and you've also got Apple Pay which is now being integrated with a lot of stores so you can make payments and authorize them with touch ID now with the S6 and the S6 Edge they have finally improved the fingerprint scanner and it's said to work more like touch ID we will have to see this hands-on on the S5 and also the Note 4 you have to swipe and swiping is just not good enough it works sometimes it doesn't it's not as accurate
Mirror as Touch ID. So we are going to have to see this one. This one is supposed to be much better and much more improved. And they've also got Samsung Pay. So they are going head to head here. That works with NFC as well as MST. So it's supposed to be improving the payment experience. These are all still going to be rolled out and we are going to have to be seeing these side by side to see how well they're going to be supported. Now additional hardware features, the S6 and the S6 Edge come with an infrared sensor as well. And they do also come with the heart rate sensor. Now the heart rate sensor, I personally don't use it, but apparently the sensor on there is also going to allow you to take pictures and things. So they are giving it an additional option here. Obviously the S6 Edge is going to come with that additional feature of the curves on both sides. So this is going to make the device a little bit easier to use. So, you know, swiping from the left and the right, it's going to give you straight from the edge. Now iPhone, they did try to do this by having a bit of a curve on the side and it works really well. But with the S6 Edge, obviously it's at a whole new level and you've got these edges that are going to give you things like notifications that are going to pop up and also your time. So nighttime clock, these are things that we've seen on Note Edge as well. But as well as that, they've got some new features. So you're going to be able to assign five contacts, for example, uh, different colors for those contacts as well. And these are going to glow. So in a, a different color. So this is going to be quite useful to see who's calling you without actually picking up the device. Now, moving on to the batteries, the iPhone 6 has an 1810 milliamp battery. This is not removable. Usage wise, I found it to be okay. It didn't actually get me through the full day in medium to heavy use. So I did need a top up in between. Now with the S6 and the S6 Edge, the S6 is going to have a 2550 milliamp battery, whereas the S6 Edge is going to have a 2600 milliamp battery. So you've got larger batteries on both the S6 and the S6 Edge compared to the iPhone 6, but you are going to be pushing out more pixels and things. So we are going to have to see how the usage actually performs in day to day tasks. The two things that you have on the S6 and the S6 Edge, which you don't have on the iPhone 6. Firstly, you've got wireless charging built in, so you're not going to have to get anything additional or an additional case or anything. You're going to be able to get wireless charging straight out of the box. So that's really, really good to see. And plus, you're going to be getting fast charging. So this is something we saw introduced in the Note 4, uh, roughly about 50% in 30 minutes, they're saying. And they've also gone ahead to say that you can charge the S6 in half the amount of time compared to the iPhone 6. So that's very, very interesting. And that's a bold claim to make from Samsung. And I can tell you from experience of using the Note 4, fast charging is a a great great advantage now moving on to the prices so the iPhone 6 for the base model so that's a 16 gigabyte model you're looking to pay around about 540 pounds in the UK or around about 650 dollars in the US now that's for the base model and the other prices go up as you can see here now with the S6 and the S6 Edge they haven't confirmed the pricing as yet they have said you it is going to be available from the 10th of April so that's the date to put in your diaries now I'd be expecting it to go for roughly about 600 pounds to 650 pounds in the UK so probably about 600 pound for the S6 and about 650 pounds for the S6 Edge and in US you're probably going to be looking at between 700 and 750 dollars now these prices are just predictions they are not set yet they're based on other flagship device prices so hopefully they should give you a bit of an idea of what to expect so there we have it the S6 and the S6 Edge versus the iPhone 6 now this is very very interesting some nice competition here now the iPhone 6 is a little bit old no doubt about that so understandably so some of the specs are a little bit old older too but uh, the new iPhone the iPhone 6s is not going to be out up until September time so in the meantime if you do want to get a new phone then you are going to be looking at uh, these options now, if you are somebody who's into the Apple ecosystem then the iPhone 6 is no doubt going to be a better option for you but if you want to try something new especially with the S6 Edge then uh, these are going to be some nice options here from Samsung which device do you think is better do you think the iPhone 6 is better or the S6 or even the S6 Edge do drop me a comment below and let me know your thoughts as soon as these devices are available we're going to be having them on the channel for full hands-on reviews if you want to see those first then be sure to subscribe to the channel i hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful if you did then please do hit that thumbs up button for me it really does help me out thanks for watching this is Safar, super saf tv and i'll see you next time if you want to see more regular videos like this one then be sure to hit the subscribe button which will be below if you're on a mobile device it may be somewhere else if you want to see my previous related video then hit the link right here if you want to stay in touch over facebook twitter and google plus then all of the addresses will be there somewhere as well as direct links in the description below okay if you're still watching then that means you've not done one of those things so no yeah. Anyway, um, I'm just I'm just gonna go um, downstairs. See. Okay. Um.
that there isn't really a downstairs one. Anyway, so yeah.